I remember this image of this woman uh, sort of like being split in half so it was like she was half there and she half wasn't and then his fingers started moving on their own I think they were twitching and he couldn't stop it you only just had a vision and only Harry murdered you you were out of skin and stole your voice to trick me I remember I was walking in a corridor completely all by myself literally there was nobody there whatsoever and someone had pulled me backwards and I literally went stumbling backwards the symptoms he had were strange like a signs of possession <laughs> like you got possessed fam scream don't because I was so convinced if we got near the television we would die I thought we were going to die Hello, I'm David Jones, and welcome to Things Unknown. Have you ever seen a shifting shadow out of the corner of your eye? Felt the hair on the back of your neck go up? On today's program, our first story gets a lot more in your face than that. I believe in several paranormal things, so like ghosts, spirits, all the rest of that. Simply because I feel like there's a lot more to this world than what meets the eye. My first paranormal activity, in a way, was um, happened when I was 13 years of age. I was up about 3 o'clock in the morning, but it was because it was on a night of a weekend, so you know, sometimes you had a little cheeky stay up when you were younger. <laughs> And I was in bed and I was playing on my phone. I think I was playing a game of some sort. And for the life of me to this day, I don't know why, but something told me to put my phone down onto my lap. And I did it. I sort of just went with it. And all of a sudden, I'd looked up and like this sort of ghosty, elegant thing just sort of shot halfway into my room and then disappeared. Now, I'm still in the same room as uh, the, this thing that had happened. So my door is there and it just sort of shot halfway there and disappeared. And it was kind of like one of those ghost things that you kind of see in like Lord of the Rings or in anything that has sort of, that makes ghosts look like they're made out of silk. I remember this image of this woman uh, sort of like being split in half so it was like she was half there and she half wasn't she didn't have any glasses on or anything like that she was a very young woman maybe about mid 20s late 20s uh, something like that she had the same length of hair that I do now um, and it was really odd because ever since that night weird things started happening um, weird things especially started at school where I couldn't exactly shout out to anyone or say anything in afraid that I was going to get judged. But I remember I was walking in a corridor completely all by myself, literally there was nobody there whatsoever and someone had pulled me backwards and I literally went stumbling backwards and I turned around to see who it was and literally there was nobody there. This must have been about two maybe three days after the incident in my bedroom had happened. About a week after that, I remember standing out in the uh, garden and it was with my parents. Um, my parents were in the conservatory, but I was out in the garden and I was facing to my parents and I knew practically no one was behind me. And this, this kind of, so your right hand, but like upside down, placed itself onto the, onto my right hand calf. I 
literally screamed. I screamed as high pitched as I could and I dashed into the house and my parents were like, what the hell just happened? And I was like, someone's touched my leg, someone's touched my leg and they were like, there's nobody there. And it was all a bit freaky. Um, I thought I would start to go a bit mad, if, I, if anything, because after a while I started seeing people that weren't really there. And it was like this particular spirit or whatever it was, was following me about. I know there's a thing where uh, people believe that if a spirit didn't get to, a spirit or a soul didn't get to achieve its goal while it was living, it, it would get trapped in that realm between being alive and being dead. And then it would kind of like attach itself to a living soul to try and claim whatever it was trying to do in the meantime to then get passed on to the dead. This soul or the spirit or whatever you want to call it kind of sort of clung to me a little because it wasn't the only sighting that I had of this person. There would be very brief split seconds but it would be the same person all the time, always still split in half and all the rest of it. It was really hard to explain and it came to a point where it wasn't kind of the only person I would be seeing. I'd be seeing people sitting in cars or standing in the streets and things like that and they would turn to look at me and disappear. Um, and they weren't really there so I kind of started coming into belief that I might have been starting to see dead people but part of me doesn't really believe in that bit it was more of the sightings that I had of this particular woman uh, I've not had any since then because she kind of hung around for about a month and disappeared um, and then that was that really <laughs> and I haven't really had anything since like I don't know if it's like that phase that some kids go through from transitioning into a child into a teenager or anything like that. I don't know, like how some dogs or something have like a sixth sense. <laughs> I don't know if it's any of that, but that's what I've gone through. So, yeah. Welcome back. For our next story, we're going to take a look at why sometimes what may seem an innocent game could have very dire consequences. So this isn't my own story, this is what I heard from a friend and I trust him a lot so I know it's 100% true. So he had a friend come around one day and um, he, it was a guy he met on Xbox or something. Um, and he came down to his house to stay over for a few nights, just hang out. And they decided to do the goddamn Ouija board. Because in my friend's house, uh, he has had some a few occurrences. So for example, like a photo would be stuck on the wall with sellotape on the corners, and then the next day he would find it perfectly folded in a drawer, closed. Which is very weird because he doesn't remember doing it, and things just like that would happen every now and again. His friend came over, and obviously he tried to do the Ouija board. It was just normal, like hello what's your name and whatever like I don't think anyone he knew came through over time my friend would start feeling uncomfortable and he'd just feel like I feel like maybe isolated but he wasn't um, and then his fingers started moving on their own I think they were twitching and he couldn't stop it so it was just kind of sitting there wiggling his fingers like oh okay well this is happening and his friend noticed this before he did uh, and that's when he was wondering what the hell was going on and was he going to die he just felt uncomfortable overall whilst his pan was doing whatever it wanted to do so obviously they decided that the, the board needed to come to an end and afterwards he just feels dodgy and when he searches it up, the symptoms he had were strange, like a signs of possession. <laughs> like, you got possessed, fam. But the weird thing is, the board wasn't saying anything bad, but somehow he was negatively affected by it. I think it might have been because in his house already, there were a few things going on, spooky occurrences, and he just encouraged that by summoning them in the room, in the house, uh, communicating with them. So later that night, I f uh, my friend goes to sleep and his friend who's staying around goes to sleep a little bit later than him. 
and my friend told me uh, before all this happened he would hear like tapping in his vent like as if there's like a mouse there but his house don't have mice and we hear just I think he is scratching on his door. So when him and his friend go to sleep, well, him, his friend hears the same tapping in the vent. And then in the morning, he says, hey, I heard these weird noises. My friend was like, whoa, okay, that happens a lot. It was kind of as if the spirits were saying, knock, knock, I'm still here. And since then, there has, haven't been any dodgy occurrences. For example, he hasn't been almost possessed. Um, but I believe he feels an energy like as if when you're hanging out with a friend you can tell they're there it's kind of like that but for him the friend is invisible <laughs> which is really unsettling to think about knowing that someone's there but they're not so since then i think his house has been quite active in spirits they haven't do, done anything to threaten him or anything but it's just the negative presence freaks him out because he knows it's there he can't do anything about it he just it's just like someone else he's living with. So yeah, he might need a priest soon. Um, I'll hit him up, I'll call up a priest and be like, hey guys, help. I think that's all that's happened. That's the major thing that's happened. Like basically, they summon spirits. He almost got possessed and his friend heard tapping in the house when everything was quiet and sleeping. Alternate realities, other dimensions. What if you just didn't have to be locked to one in your life? What if you could get pulled through strange circumstances from one to another? Hey there, I, I understand you're interested in strange stories, supernatural occurrences, story I've not told many people before. Uh, it happened a long time ago. I'm talking October 2005. Me and a friend, let's call him Mr. S, we decided we were going to watch the whole Star Wars saga from beginning to end. So we began early on a Sunday morning and we're, we're knocking back a few beers and we go into my cupboard and we find these cans of lager. We don't know how they got there. My friend Mr. S did not bring any alcohol with him. And they were a strange brand that I've never seen before and I've never seen since. So we said, what the heck? We're a couple of teenagers and it's beer. Who cares? And we drank these beers. There were about maybe eight, eight or nine cans in total. And we were drinking pretty quick. And so we sat down, slightly tipsy, and began episode four, A New Hope. Now, bear in mind, me and Mr. S had seen this movie a hundred times easy, maybe two hundred. I've seen all these movies a lot, but A New Hope, man, I watched that movie daily at one point. And we knew this movie frame by frame. We, for some reason, our attention was drawn to, I believe it was the right side of the frame, absolutely in our faces, there's this droid, this white droid that looks like a skeleton, maybe death personified. And I kind of said to Mr. S, I said, wait, I've never seen that droid before. I've seen this movie a hundred times and I've never seen that droid. And he said, no, I, I agree. I've never seen that. Like, what the heck? It felt like we had entered an alternate reality. Like, we slipped through a vision in time and we're watching it. A version of A New Hope which is identical in every detail except this one droid prop was different. Because this guy looked kind of like a skeleton, we instantly came up with the name of Bony Harry. We caught this guy Bony Harry and we were like, that guy looks really terrifying and I'm kind of freaked out that he, you know, we, we never noticed him before. So we continued the movie and uh, we're, we, we kind of started to forget about Bony Harry. We continued to drink these beers, these, these strange beers that we had never seen before. It didn't really like, taste like any beer that I had. Uh, we, we, we kind of felt a little more tipsy than we should have done. Even as two teenagers drinking beer, we felt a little more odd, like we were kind of getting spaced out. So anyway, we continued with the movie, and at the halfway point, I turned to my friend and I said, well, there's a lot of props in these scenes. Wouldn't it be, like, weird if we saw that prop again? This bony hairy guy? 
and I kid you not, I swear on everything that is true, the exact second I finished that sentence, we looked up, and there he was, walking down the streets of Moss Eisley, a fully operational Bonnie Harry. He was walking towards the camera, like very clearly in shot, really noticeable, and he was jittering, he was shaking, like he was convulsing, and it scared the hell out of us. We were like, what the hell? This are we mentally inserting this into the film? Is this like a shared hallucination? Like, what is going on? And we were actually getting pretty terrified. We continued with the movies. My friend Mr. S said, you think we should maybe stop watching? Do you think this is affecting our view? Do you think we're gonna call an apocalypse by watching these movies? Like, it feels like we're tearing holes in reality. And I was like, no, no, we just didn't notice him before. Then it's a perfectly rational explanation. You know, Mr. Lucas would have reused props because it was all budget. Like, don't worry about it. So we finished the movie, and uh, Boney Harry didn't show up again. We went straight on to episode five, The Empire Strikes Back, and uh, we kind of joked, "Oh, what if he shows up again here?" And we laughed it off. Externally, we were laughing. Internally, we were terrified. Every single scene of that movie, we were just looking for this guy, Boney Harry. Where is he? Where is he? He's gonna show up. Like, he's been following us all day now. And he didn't show up. And we were like, have we lifted the curse of Boney Harry? So we took a, a short break in between episode 5 and episode 6. We grabbed some to eat, and we finished off these beers. Now, at this point, we could barely walk straight, and these beers should not have had that effect on us. We sat down, and we said, okay, one movie left. Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. We stuck it on. My friend Mr. S, he turned to me and he said, you know, if he was going to show back up, it would probably be here. And I was like, huh, don't mention it, and he won't appear. We look back at the screen, and right there, in shot, taking up half the shot, was Boney Harry, staring directly into our souls. And then Mr. S leaned forward, and he went, there he is. And then I screamed, don't! Because I was so convinced if we got near the television, we would die. I thought we were going to die. These movies we knew so well were suddenly infected with this weird, creepy appearance of this, this problem we'd never seen him before. And when I screamed don't at him, he legitimately teared up. He, he turned around and he said, your voice sounded different. I said, what? He said, your voice sounded different. It sounded like you were channeling Satan. We finished out the movie. Boney Harry appeared a few more times during the movie. And uh, in that same section of the start of the film, he didn't appear again. Okay, so after the movie finished, Mr. S said, I need to go to the bathroom. And I said, okay. And then he looked at me and he said, this is going to sound really weird, but I'm scared to go to the bathroom now. And I said, uh, okay. And he said, would you mind waiting outside? Wait, just wait outside the door so we can keep talking. I, I, I'll be able to go because I feel genuinely frightened that something is out to get us. It feels like there's something wrong with the world. And I said, okay, okay. And he went to the bathroom and I stood outside and we continued to talk. And then he went quiet. And I was like, Mr. S, uh, are you okay? And he must have gone quiet for like 30 seconds, and then I saw the door handle shaking, like not opening, shaking. And I was like, dude, what are you do doing? He slowly said, I know what you've done. And I was like, huh? And he was like, I know what you've done. And at this point, he was in tears. I could hear his voice bubbling up. And I was like, what, what are you talking about? And he was like, you killed my best friend and you stole his skin. And I was like, huh? And then he came out, he pulled the door open, and he just ran past me, and then turned around and looked at me, and he breathed a sigh of relief. And I was like, what's wrong? And he said, I genuinely just had a vision that only Harry murdered you, peeled off your skin, and stole your voice to trick me. And I was like, what the hell is happening to us? Is it the beer? Is it is there something supernatural really going on? I don't, I don't know. I just don't know. So anyway, it was pretty late at this point, and uh, we decided to settle down 
and uh, get some sleep because we were creeped out and we couldn't relax. But that's sort of like right next to each other, so we talked a little. We eventually uh, fell asleep pr pretty quickly, actually. This was maybe about 11.30, midnight. A few hours later, it was around about 3.15, 3.16, something like that. Um, I woke up with a jolt. I like shot up. I just sat up. I had, I can't recall the comment, but I know I had a nightmare about Tony Harry. And I shot him out of bed, and I looked over, and Mr. S opened his eyes, and I didn't tell him, I said, I said, hey, I, I'm, a, I'm awake, what, uh, did you literally just wake up? And he said, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I just had a nightmare about Bonnie Harry, and I was like, me too, and he was like, I don't believe that, and I was like, dude, I swear, I literally just woke up. I can never explain what I felt that day. I can't explain. I am being genuinely serious. Me and my friend Mr. S, we had a shared, like, psychoactive experience. Like, we did not take drugs. We don't do drugs. We, we drank this weird beer. And again, there's a mystery as to how the beer got there. That could have played a part, but it still doesn't explain why we didn't notice this character earlier in our lives. Now, I've since read up on the character. Yeah, I was right. Mr. Lucas, we used him in various scenes because they had to save money on props. But yet, when we're alone and we, when we talk, like, we both still remember how it felt that day. I felt sick. My stomach felt heavy. My, my best friend was in tears right in front of me. This, this thing affected us. And the only logical explanation that I could come up with is that that fear somehow catapulted us into an alternate universe where every single aspect of everything was identical except this one little droid, Oni Harry, was now a part of Star Wars. And in my original universe, that dude did not exist. I swear he did not exist. Thank you for watching. This has been David Jones, Things Unknown. Hope you sleep well tonight. Until next time.